Hi, this is Matt from The Turning Gate, and Backlight 3 has finally arrived. We are really excited to be sharing it with you, finally. And in this first video about Backlight 3, I wanted to get into the new hero image feature in Pangolin Album. Now, Pangolin Album is the module that we use to design uh, the basic image galleries in Backlight 3. Uh, if you're upgrading from a previous version of Backlight, then you should already be well familiar with it. Um, so let's dig into the new hero image feature. Um, we're looking at an album right now that has an, a hero image. Um, it's this big image at the top that says spring flowers on it. So the first thing to understand is that the image and the text are separate pieces. Uh, the image is just one of the images in our gallery. Uh, you can see it's the second thumbnail image right here. So this is, um, it's my hero image. It's also the image that I've selected as my cover image, which means that if I go back to the, um, the album set in which the album resides, it's the image that we're using for a thumbnail. So in the future, I might like to um, create a way to separate these two things so that you can choose them independently. But right now, they are one and the same. Um, and uh, let's, let's dig into the actual album here in Backlight, which I have on my right-hand side. And if I go into my base settings, uh, we can set the cover image. So one of the options is random. And if you select a random cover image for your album set, then you will also uh, see that your hero image will be randomized. Now this may be desirable, um, but if not every image in your album is um, necessarily appropriate for the, um, the hero image, either because of its content or because of its, its shape, then you may want to make a point of selecting an appropriate cover image uh, to, to use. Now, you don't have to have an ear, a hero image. This is entirely optional. You can leave it turned off if you want to, but if you are gonna use it, be intentional about it. Either understand that random is absolutely what you want or go in and intentionally select either um, provide a custom thumbnail or select the most desirable image from your gallery. So I'm gonna use this one. And what I'm also gonna do while I'm here in the album settings is I'm gonna switch over to um, a, a template that I've already set up that has no changes. It's straight out of the box default album template because I'm gonna show you how to set up the hero image. So, um, let me, yep, auto refresh is on. Our hero image is gone. And let's dive into the designer to start setting this up. So I'm going to design on this template and when I'm in here, you can see that there's a new uh, control group called Hero Image. And when we open that up, there is a single option. It is Enable Hero Image. When we turn that on, we get a bunch of options for customizing the Hero Image. So let me first save that just to show you what we get by default. So by default, we get our selected cover image uh, sitting at the top of our album. Um, it's pretty plain. There's no styling around it. It's just there in a box. Uh, the box by default has an aspect ratio of two to one. So it's twice as wide as it is tall. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a border color that should be easier for you to see. Uh, so let's give that a dark border. Um, as you can see, there's some space on either side of the image, and that is because my image, I believe, is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and I'm putting it in a 2 by 1 box. So it's not a perfect fit. The way around that, uh, as we come down to size coverage, it's auto by default. I'm going to set this to cover, and that will cause the image to fill the space. So that's starting to look pretty nice. I am going to increase the width of my border around the image to 12. I'm going to adjust the border radius also to 12, give myself some nice round corners around the hero image. And now what I want you to see is that uh, the box has round corners, but the image within the box still has very sharp corners. I don't like that. So I'm going to set this other slider, border radius of image, to also be 12. And when I do that, now we have nice round images 
or borders on the image itself. But if I look very closely, you know, I've got a 12 pixel border along the top and along the side. But when I'm in that corner, the border gets a little fat. That's, that's more than 12 pixels. And I think that um, that fattening in the corner looks a little strange. So that is another reason that we have these separate border radius controls. So I'm gonna set this back to six, just so that the image itself pushes a little further into those corners. Um, and that's gonna give us, I think, a much nicer, yeah. You see, it, it maintains that 12 pixel, or pretty close to 12 pixels around the corner. We don't get that fattening effect, at least not as badly, if at all. Um, and in my opinion, I think that looks a lot nicer. So that looks good. Let's move into some of these other controls. We've got position X and position Y, and that allows you to um, change where the image bases its, its position from. So right, well, right now it's basically a perfect fit. Let me, um, this changes the three to one. And what that's going to mean is that our box is gonna be much shorter than the image. And so now there's gonna be a part of that image that is, you know, it overflows out the top. So there's some image that we're not seeing at the top. There's also some image we're not seeing at the bottom. For this image, I mean, that's fine, but maybe maybe the, I've cho if I've chosen another image where the, the action that I wanna see is really toward the top of the frame or the top of the composition, then I can change this position. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it from the top. So it's going to bump down. We're gonna see the top of that image and then everything that's not in this box is overflowing out the bottom. Like we're, we're not seeing it, it's being cropped out. But so this lets you um, set the position of the image within the box so that you're cropping the right way. Uh, and you can also do that on the X axis by setting it to the left or the right. So let me set this back to center and I'm actually, I'm gonna make this much larger. We're gonna to go to one to one. I'm gonna set this back to auto so that it's not covering any longer because I wanna show you what happens when the box is a larger aspect ratio than your image. So we've got a lot of space here. Um, if for whatever reason, this is more the effect that you want, um, that is fine. We've got this repeat option. You can set it up to repeat the image uh, to, to fill the space. So you can repeat it on both axes. You can repeat it just on the X or the Y axis, uh, depending on how well it does or doesn't fill that. Um, I personally don't like this effect. So I'm gonna go back to no repeat. I'm gonna set this back to uh, two to one. Oh, and I want the size coverage to be cover. So, at this point, um, I'm finished with the image portion of the hero image, and I'm gonna start working on the title. So the next thing at the bottom here, we have display album title. I'm gonna turn that on. And let's just save it so we can see what we start with. We get the album title. It's pretty small. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do, uh, first I'm gonna scroll down to the font size slider. I'm gonna blow this up to, I don't know, let's go 196 and see what that looks like. Pretty large. Um, that's cool, but I wanna see if I can get it all on one line. Let's take it down to, I don't know, one, uh, 128. All right, looking very nice now. I am going to change the font to a nice Helvetica because Helvetica is classic. I'm going to apply a text shadow and that's gonna give us some separation to get our, our text off of the background image just a little bit. So if I save those changes, um, a very subtle change to our typography, but looking a little bit nicer. Now I do have this really cool font uh, that I like a lot. We use it for the backlight logo. It's called Marvin Visions. I already have it set up. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that instead of the default families that are available in backlight. So you can, you know, uh, via Google fonts or whatever, uh, set up in your page template, you can go ahead and you can uh, write in your own fonts. So that looks really cool to me. 
I like it a lot. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some more changes though. We have this max width slider and what this allows you to do is it allows you to um, create sort of artificially create line breaks in the text. So right now the, the text fits within the box and so it's not breaking. I can take this max width slider and I can take it way down so that my text no longer is going to fit. So if I set that to 614, now I'm saying, hey, the title box is narrower than the text itself. And so it's going to break the text. So now I get it on two lines, which is exactly what I want in this case. Um, and then I have the position X and Y for the album title. So if I want, I can push it over to the left. I could also use the Y to put it toward the top or the bottom of the box. I'm going to leave it vertically centered. Um, and I think that looks really good, but there's one problem. The left side of my image is way busier than the right side of my image. Um, and so I'm sort of losing the text in the flowers. So in this particular case, um, I am going to put it to the right instead. Now remember, this is um, a template setting. So any gallery that uses this template is going to have these same effects. So you might have uh, different ideals for positioning depending on your, your hero image. So you either want to create uh, a template that is going to suit all of your needs, or maybe you'll have a couple of different versions of templates that you can use for different albums. Up to you how you want to manage that. Um, but this is looking really nice. Uh, I, I'm going to actually reduce the size of my text to 96, just because I want to create some more space. And then I'm going to nudge using these margins. I'm going to nudge the text off that right side by another few pixels. So I'm going to set that to 48 and that bumps it a little to the left. I think that's looking pretty cool. Um, you've got font weight here. I'm going to leave that alone. You've got text transform. Uh, now the Marvin visions font is all capital letters all the time. So I don't need to mess with that, but you can, um, force text. Like you can see it might be a little small in your video. I don't know whether you can see this, but the spring flowers and the breadcrumbs, you know, I've got capital S, capital F, but lowercase. Otherwise, if I wanted to text transform that so everything was capitalized, then I would use uppercase, for example. So the last thing I want to show you is this break point. And um, the reason that's there is let's go to mobile. Um, you know, my, my title wouldn't really fit in a box this small. And so we use this break point to right now it's never, which is why my title has vanished um, because it doesn't fit anymore. I'm not telling it to do anything else. So if I set the break point to say 992, then when my screen width is less than my break point, it'll kick the title out of the box. So it will no longer overlay the image and instead it will drop beneath it and it will be a title above the album. So this is what happens. You want to set this so that your gallery looks nice on mobile phones so we don't lose that title. So on a large display, it overlays the image. On a narrow display, like on a phone, we get it down here and that keeps our layout safe. So this is the hero image. I think it's a really great new feature for um, sort of making an impact when people open the albums on your website. You can, you can put the hero up at the top, really use it to sort of set the stage for the collection of images that follows. Uh, and this is an exclusive feature in Backlight 3. So I hope you get a lot of great use about this. I'm going to make some more videos highlighting some additional new features in Backlight 3. The first few that I've got planned are all going to be about new features specifically relating to the albums. Uh, I hope you'll be looking forward to those. I'll talk at you soon. Thank you. Have a great time. And I really hope you love using Backlight 3.